practicality was definitely placed ahead of design here. I guess the Lydia regularly docks at harbors that don't have their own gangways, and rather than make the passengers climb ladders, they opted for the less beautiful alternative. I have no idea where Inch had the... Even someone with as much experience as I have has to look twice before realizing it's a fake. Inch is watching the door. I need another way into the cabin. Even if I have to find another... Inch is watching the door. Even if I lure Inch away, I couldn't enter the cabin without the Baroness noticing something. I have to find another way into the cabin. The poster proudly announces the ship's first Atlantic crossing. The city of New York welcomes the MS Lydia. The silhouette of New York and of a ship, but not of this one. They probably use the same template for every ship. Looks pretty official, with a coat of arms, flag, seal, and all the trappings. And the poster is clean as a whistle. Someone seems to cherish it. The silhouette of looks. Inch is intelligent and ruthless, a dangerous combination. He's not a brilliant planner, but he is smart and careful. He senses danger. I'm afraid he might suspect that something is wrong. I think he's frightening. You look in his face and you'd believe that he's at peace with the world in himself. But Adil told me about his mood swings. From one moment to the next, the mask falls away and he's capable of anything. He has the enviable talent of being able to sleep anywhere, anytime. He once fell asleep on a cable car and only woke up after he'd already gone up the mountain and back down again. We booked this cabin because it's centrally located, easy to duck in whenever we need to. Of course, the fact that it's a first-class cabin with a huge bathroom and shower had nothing to do with it. As soon as I've swapped the jewels, I'll treat myself to a hot shower, and then we'll see how the evening progresses. Okay then. I am Patricia Mayers, young, Attractive, clueless. I am Patricia Mayers. Normally I don't carry so many things around, but it would have been suspicious if I'd come aboard with nothing but a rucksack whilst pretending to be the daughter of a wealthy family. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money isn't the most important thing in life. If all you've got is this penny, as well as family and friends, then you're a very rich girl, he said. I'll take it with me. It'll bring me luck. I always try to carry as few personal items as possible. If my things are ever searched, they won't reveal my true identity. I don't like wearing hats, but they do fit the role. And I have to admit that the day in London when we shopped for Patricia Mayers was a lot of fun. It happened pretty fast between us. It was magic when we first met. Birds of a feather flock together, and he can be very charming.
Daddy wasn't at all amused when I brought him home, mind, but I don't think he'd have been satisfied with anyone. As soon as I've... I got this necklace from my father. If all you... Fantastico! Ha-ha! Would it be okay for you if I get some fresh air up on deck? Of course, my dear. Give my regards to the sea. Wooden salad tongs. Just small enough to carry around unseen. Lady Westmacott never let anyone tell her what to do. They say she was a stubborn one. And today, she's one of the richest women in the world. Lady Westmacott never let anyone... A wonderful concert, wasn't it? I wouldn't have expected you to be a connoisseur of classical music. Because I'm American? Because you're young, and friendly, and radiant. Someone like you doesn't have to know a lot to get along well in life. Are you easily prejudiced at your age? In my long experience, there's often a core of truth at the center of every prejudice. Prejudice is the reason of fools. Was that written in a book you once read? Oh, I've read many books. Good books. But not my books, you mean to say. You're a writer? Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, Miss... Mayers. You know, I'm not planning on throwing myself at a man. I'm glad to hear it. You have to work. Earn your own money. Oh, I will. My grades are excellent, and I really want to study acting in New York. None of my books has ever been made into a good film. The stories were twisted, shortened, and simplified so that even the dimmest fellow could follow them. I want to do theater and travel. I speak three languages. That would be three more than most people your age can speak. Do what you have to do, but stay away from bad men. Is this your first trip on the Lydia? That's quite enough. Life is too short for conversations like this. I do wish that rather delightful Swiss policeman had come along. I heard you had an interesting trip on the train. It was thrilling. I'm hoping for an encore. Perhaps in Cairo. Mr. Kreutzer possesses impressive technique, don't you think? He certainly does. His numerous playmates in Austria can tell you more about it than I. You mean... Mr. Kreutzer is a womanizer? I'm not talking about cheap skirts. I'm talking about expensive clothes. A man like him needs funds to support his lifestyle. Just go over to him, my dear. Tell the maestro that your family is wealthy. You have everything he's looking for. Money and a pretty face. Hold your tongue. Mr. Kreutzer, Lady Westmacott, please. Or did you have your eye on me, Mr. Kreutzer? Old, yes, but rich. Jezebel.
Mr. Kreutzer, Maestro. That's better, freeloader. You and Mr. Kreutzer, you seem to know each other. Not really, but I know his type. Parasites who cling to the rich and famous and suck them dry. The young, misunderstood painter. The innovative writer who writes books that no one wants to read. The musical talent that has to be supported. The ladies and gentlemen of high society let the others use them and call themselves patrons. Another word for fool. Didn't you finance archaeological excavations in the Near East and Egypt? For my husband, and I was there myself. I catalogued items for him, and I didn't show him off like a trophy at cocktail parties. But my son was one of them, the worst kind. The kind that sucks not only the money, but also the life right out of a person. May I take my leave? You may. The lady is not a fan of shallow conversation, which I respect. I shouldn't talk to her unless I have something serious to say. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. He's sweating profusely. I hope the crew doesn't... He's sweating. I hope the crew... Lovely big towel. I hope tomorrow I'll have a chance to sunbathe and enjoy the rest of the trip. Ah, I hope. T a deck chair in the sunshine on a cruise ship. I'd be a fool to miss out on that tomorrow, but I have to take care of my duties before I can relax in the sun. Lovely big towel. A handsome man and a talented musician, but he doesn't seem very happy. Hello, Mr. Kreutzer. Do you want to have a go at me, like the old witch in there? I just wanted to talk to you. Now is not the best time. I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your music, and that Lady Westmacott did not have the right to speak to you like that. Really? How do you know? You don't know me. Then, did she have the right? No, she didn't. That cynical old witch enjoys exposing the weaknesses of others, although we all have them. She as well. She lusts for recognition and acts as though it weren't so disgraceful. She rejects prizes and awards with snide remarks, but she's angry when others receive them. She needs to know that she's better than others. You seem to know her quite well. I've only met her once or twice, but I know her son and some of her friends. One friend of hers supported me for a long time. No one is brave enough to say it to her face, but everyone hates her. Her or her success? 
You're so talented. Why aren't you performing on the world's great stages? Fate, perhaps. Or bad luck. My parents opened every door for me and my sister and expected corresponding careers. Over-ambitious parents who forced their children to play music? No, it wasn't like that. I loved it. I loved to play the violin. They didn't have to force me. I wanted to do it on my own. I thought I would achieve my goals if only I worked hard enough. But it was not to be. What happened? In a more dramatic story, I'd say that I broke my hand just before my big break. Or that I was rejected because of my nationality or my name. Or that I was brought down by a conspiracy. But nothing like that ever happened. I practiced like mad. Got better and better. Really good. But nothing happened. The right people never heard me. I was never in the right place at the right time. Can you imagine how it feels to always be on the cusp of a breakthrough? To be just one evening away from becoming an overnight sensation? To see how other, less talented violinists pass you by because you just aren't lucky enough? How terrible. For every star in the limelight, there are a dozen more that burn out unseen, fading month by month. I didn't want to be one of those people who waste their lives chasing dreams without realizing that they're unattainable. If I couldn't have the life that I always dreamt of and that my family expected from me, then at least I could have the next best life. The next best life? Mansions, limousines, parties. Everything you could wish for. Though none of it belongs to me. The lady called you a freeloader. <laughs> An ugly word. But maybe not so far from the truth. I move with the rich and famous, and at first glance, I live exactly the life my father always wished for me. A carefree life, easy going. And I play the violin, which I always loved to do. But it's not really like that. It's empty. My life is just a shell. A show. And everyone knows it. I loved something once, and I burned for it. But now, the violin is just an accessory for practicing my real profession. And your family? How could I ever look them in the eyes? A failed violinist who gave up. What does the future hold for you? Isn't it obvious? My hands are starting to shake from alcohol. What will be left once I lose my good looks? I'll have nothing then. And so I'll put an end to it all. You can't say things like that. With my father's pistol, I always have it with me. It... It's gone! <laughs> Fate won't even grant me a quick death. Don't you think you can still make it? No. It's too late now. The real question is, did I give up too quickly back then? I don't know. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Kreutzer. Two handsome sailors are standing at the table and studying a marine map. Good thing they're busy. I can have a look around without being disturbed. If someone leaves the bridge, I'll pretend to be stargazing. And if that doesn't work, I'll just turn on the charm. Classic. The thief enters through the ventilation shaft. Can it really be that easy? No, it can't. The cover is screwed shut. All the first-class cabins have their own ventilation. The shaft might be my best point of entry, but unfortunately, the cover is screwed shut.
This should be the entrance to the cargo hold. Not really my concern. Bull, curling, shuffleboard, all the same to me. I'm not interested in any of that now. The two of them seem to be in a private conversation. I'd better not disturb them. When Adil and I were following the professor in London, I was disguised. But that doesn't mean he won't recognize me now. No, I won't talk to them as long as I can avoid it. Very fine handiwork. The model maker even wrote the name of the ship on the tiny life preservers. But the winter garden at the back of the saloon is missing. And the stern deck looks different. It was obviously made before the ship was remodeled. Maybe one of the crew whiled away the long nights at sea building the model. Only someone with a lot of time and a love of the original could build such a thing. Several journals and magazines. Ah, huh, this looks pretty interesting. Art and culture today. Huh, there's something about the exhibition. Unique masterpieces exhibited for the first time together in their home country. Tireless efforts of Baroness von Trebitz. No time for reading. I have to find the secret compartment of the Baroness's cabin. No time for... The only regular event seems to be the nightly drink in the saloon. Judging from the rest of the entertainment program, it seems necessary. briefly discussed whether we should try to steal the second eye here on the ship. The lack of escape routes and the 10 centimeter thick door to the safe settled the question. Legrand is an important part of our plan. He's the one who'll arrest Inch in the end, but there's still a lot to do before that happens. Come in. How can I help you, young lady? What are the other passengers like? Mm, listen, young lady, I, I do not really have time to chat right now. Today is my first day and it is going no, differently than I had expected. You do seem a little stressed. Maybe you should relax. Stress isn't good for you. <laughs> you're, you're right. If there is 
nothing else I can help you with. But you weren't really helpful at all. Maybe I'll come back later. Bye now. The good doctor seems to be very busy. I shouldn't bother him. No time for reading. The lady is not a fa- I shouldn't- Swiss go. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain. First class cabins have but unfortunately hmm. the penny might be the right size. <clears throat> the penny fits perfectly into the screw slot, but my fingers aren't strong enough to turn the screw. That's it. 
I can jam the penny in and make an improvised screwdriver. That's it. I just hope that this is the right shaft. I still haven't found a way to get back into the ventilation shaft from the cabin. I need something like a rope and a way to tie it to the shaft. Ah, lovely. Still haven't found I need no idea what kind of flag this is, but the pole it's attached to could be very useful one day. It's about eighty centimeters long and looks quite stable. Yes, it's sturdy, but it's also too cumbersome to carry around. The pole alone won't help me in there. Hmm. I could tie the bath towel around the pole, put the pole across the ventilation shaft, and climb down with the help of the towel. Sounds like a plan. Here goes nothing. Jakob Aust. I finally got you. I'll have them arrest you and justice will be done. Can I be of assistance, madam? Yes, you can get out of the way. Shall I tidy up, madam? No, it's time to celebrate. Excellent, the coast is clear. Not even Adil would believe that this painting was an original. He was interested in art when we first met. But for him, it was always about the content, not the technique. I had my work cut out, teaching him to concentrate on the stroke, the material, and the signature of the artist. It's the only way to distinguish an original from a fake. I don't care who painted it as long as it speaks to me, he said. A perspective that, as an art thief, I can't share, but it's jolly, nonetheless. The mannequin could probably wear my clothes. It'd disappear under the Baroness's clothes, though. As a child, I often stood in front of shop windows and tried to stand as still as the mannequins. But when I got bored, I claimed that one of the mannequins had blinked and declared myself the winner. It seems like she was searching for a specific photo and that she actually found it. Jakob Aust. Now I've got you, she said. We got our hands on the list of passengers, but I don't recognize the name. Hundreds of black and white photos, many of them tinted. From the 20s and 30s, I guess. Oh, I don't have time to deal with them. The Baroness wrote something down and took the slip of paper with her. Oh, it's probably not important. No. Inch said he hid the eye in the Baroness's luggage, which makes sense. He can't be certain that he'll have the chance to hide it again when we arrive in Cairo.
No, the Baroness and Inch aren't working together. He wouldn't hide the jewel in her handbag. Far too many hiding places for a jewel. But Inch said something about a combination. That sounds like a little safe or a hidden compartment. And she wouldn't have something like that in her suitcase. A giant portable cupboard. Maybe the jewel is inside. Impressive for a quick drink on the go. Gin, whiskey, liqueur, sherry, vodka, brandy, and champagne. Every bottle is at least half empty. I wonder what the Baroness is running away from. Loneliness? Disappointment? Grief? Napkins and towels, but no jewel. Corkscrew, bottle opener, coaster, nothing else. A suitable glass for every occasion. But most of them look more or less unused. The Baroness probably disregards style and etiquette when she's drinking alone, and just uses the same glass. What's that? A small leather strap. Aha! Hmm. Nepatiti, Guernica, A.D., Buonarotti's Adam. This could be a memory aid for the Baroness. And it would explain how Inch discovered the combination. I'm going to copy the hints. Hmm. As I see it, I have to decipher these clues to find three of the symbols. Then I can guess the fourth. Well, Nefertiti was an Egyptian queen. The monogram and the two other clues aren't much help. To me, it looks like a combination lock. A good one, too. The door only opens when the right symbols are in place. I'd put money on the eye of the Sphinx being behind this door. I don't think anyone would bet against me. I've copied the hints into my diary. Maybe someone on board can help me to figure out at least three of the four symbols. There are outlines of animals. A dog, a cat, a bear, and a rooster amongst others. Eight symbols per cylinder. That means more than 4,000 possible combinations. I've copied the hit, maybe some, if only, but what? Someone could come in and catch me at any moment. But it's important not to leave a trace. Inch absolutely cannot find out about us. I must hurry. Inch must have found the secret compartment and been certain that the Baroness wasn't using it.
close. Maybe it was a steward who checked whether everything was ready for the Baroness's nightly rest. Whoever it was, I should leave as fast as possible before someone comes back. What on earth is going on here? I don't like that. Is someone else after the eye as well? But even if that is the case, what does the audio tape have to do with it? I can't let it get to me. I have a job to do. An old-fashioned chair for an old-fashioned lady. Professor Lucien could certainly tell me everything there is to know about Nefertiti, but he might also realize that I was in his museum in London. I'd better not talk to him. Professor Lucien, but he... It seems like Dr. Gebhardt was able to wrestle himself away from his work, but he still doesn't seem to be very relaxed. Quite the opposite. And why won't he go to the saloon? Dr. Gebhardt, getting some fresh air? Oh, you could say that. Do you know the Egyptian queen, Nefertiti? Uh, yes. There is a famous bust of her. Really? Tell me more. No, I, I am sorry. I, I do not have time for that. Does Guernica mean anything to you? Now listen, young lady, I do not know what they told you, but just because I am German, I am not responsible for the crimes of my government. Crimes? What are you talking about? <sighs> we obeyed orders, just like everybody else. Now leave me alone. Do you know what the monogram A.D. stands for? What? A capital A with a small D below it. Yes, I do. Will you leave me alone if I tell you what it means? You know. It is not just any monogram. It is the first. Albrecht Dürer, a German artist, signed all his works with it. He was the first artist to sign all of his work with a monogram. It was not common to do so before then. Are you sure? His wooden engravings were, and still are, printed billions of times in Germany. Billions of times? You're exaggerating. Not at all. His work appears on German marks. And what? That's enough. I told you what you wanted to know. Please, leave me alone now. Dr. Gebhardt? Yes. Buenarati. No idea. Don't know him. But... 
Try your luck somewhere else and leave me alone, please. Thank you. I ought to be going. Thank God. Strange guy. I wonder what or who he's watching in the saloon. He seems like he's waiting for something, and he's growing more nervous by the minute. Westmacott? Yes. I hear you're well-versed in Egyptian history, Lady Westmacott. Can you tell me anything about Nefertiti? A queen. The main wife of Akhenaten. Did she have a favorite animal? What a strange question. I, um, just heard that they really adore cats in ancient Egypt. Well, that's true, but... I don't know whether Nefertiti had any special affinity for animals. Does Guernica mean anything to you? Why are you asking me all these strange questions? I... I'm curious. <laughs> How shall I learn if I don't ask? Pick up a book. Are you interested in art? Not really. I'm more interested in real life, in people. So, you don't know Albrecht Dürer? Just because I'm not interested in art doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. What can you tell me about him? Books, my dear, books. In them, you'll find the answers to all your questions, even the most foolish ones. I bet you don't know anything about him, and you just want to cover it up. Ah, you want to appeal to my honor. <laughs> Too obvious, I'm afraid. I saw a sign in Venice. It said, Buenarati. Do you know what it means? I'm sorry, I don't speak Italian. May I take my leave? You may. He's sweating profusely, but I hope the crew doesn't take the captain. Hello, Captain De Conti. Miss Mayers, how nice to see you. You look beautiful. We missed you at dinner. I was in my cabin. I, uh, I didn't feel very well. <laughs> oh, I hope you're feeling better. Lovely concert, wasn't it? You only heard the end. It was really wonderful. All the more curious that Lady Westmacott embarrassed Mr. Kreutzer like that, don't you think? I have no idea what got into her. They say she's a difficult person, but this... Maybe it's the privilege of famous people to be a bit strange from time to time. When I was still a young sailor, Enrico Caruso was a passenger on our ship. <laughs> and he... I think she's fascinating. She's achieved so much, and all by herself. Lady Westmacott? Oh yes, that's true. The most successful writer in the world. Do you know any more about her? Everything. <laughs> I'm her biggest fan. What do you want to know? Where is she from? Who were her parents? Her father was a wealthy British salesman. Her mother died in childbirth. She had an outstanding education, but was a lonely child, they say. Her father was away on business most of the time. I know how she feels. For many years, my father's career was also more important than me. Don't say that, my child. Your father paid for the life you now live. Did Lady Westmacott's father marry again? Yes. A woman 15 years his junior. She didn't really care for the child. She was something of a high society lady. She made the headlines with her antics more often than the family would have liked. And her novels. How did she come to be a writer? In interviews, she always mentions her French tutor, who encouraged her to write when she was a child. After some poems and short stories, she began to write detective novels with great success. The rest is history. The experts are arguing whether she or Shakespeare 
and sold more books. Although she doesn't receive the same deference. That's true. But her books are much more innovative and extraordinary than people generally give her credit for. And what does an elderly lady like her want in Egypt? I couldn't really say. She was there many times with her husband, an archaeologist. He died a long time ago. I heard something about a reception at the Egyptian Museum? Yes, for the eyes of the Sphinx, or rather, for the eye. But I don't think she'd go to Cairo just for that. She usually stays away from official events, didn't participate in the literary scene either, always stayed as far away as possible from high society, probably because of her stepmother. Is it true that you're a war hero? Mm-hmm. In two world wars. That tells you how old I must be. <laughs> you're as old as you feel. Oh, God, I hope not. Aren't you feeling well? You shouldn't burden your pretty little head with the dark thoughts of an old man, my dear. If you don't feel well, maybe you should take it easy. I'm afraid if I take it easy, it'll kill me. You seem to be a pessimist. Fatty liver, asthma, gallstones, jaundice, gout, shingles, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, circulatory trouble, knee problems, pulmonary embolism, gastritis, migraine, neuralgia, tinnitus, rheumatism, pleurisy, thrombosis, and constipation. Those are what's been diagnosed so far. My body is a curse. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to... I'm sorry. Forgive an old man. I, I I didn't mean to shock you. You're still the captain of this beautiful ship. Duh. They couldn't just get rid of me, so they stuck me somewhere where I can't make travel anymore. Don't say that. This ship runs fine without me. The crew knows what to do. They don't need me. They... They don't want me. Captain! It's... I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm burdening you with all of this. Forgive me, eh? I'd like to rest for a while. Soon enough, it'll be time to head back to the cold face, eh? <laughs> Captain De Conti? Yes? Do you know Nefertiti? Is she... a Greek queen? No. She... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Guernica, does that mean anything to you? Not a harbor that I've ever docked at. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Do you know Albrecht Dürer? Yes, an artist. Not bad. But he has his weaknesses as well. For example? For one, he wasn't Italian. That's a pity. You can say that again. <laughs> at least he lived in Italy for a while. What else can you tell me about him? I once overheard an argument on board between a German and a Spaniard about who elevated the woodcut to an art form, Albrecht Dürer or Alberto Durero. Eventually, they realized they were talking about the same man. Ha! Albrecht Dürer is called Alberto Durero in Spain? That's right. Don't ask me why. Buena Rati. That sounds Italian, doesn't it? Ha! You can say that again. Buona Rotti is the name of the greatest artist of all time. Michelangelo Buona Rotti, who most people only know by his first name. Just imagine. One man, an Italian, achieves perfection in all three movements of graphic arts. His David is the most famous statue in the world. As an architect, he was a genius. He built parts of St. Peter's Basilica. And as a painter, Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The creation of Adam. The spark of life leaps from God to Adam. One of the most famous paintings in the world. Yes, it is is the Sistine Chapel, Apostolic Palace, Vatican City. I don't know any animals associated with them. Animals? Oh, it's a game I used to play. My father posed me a riddle and 
I have to gas an animal. And Buona Rotis Adam was the hint? Hmm. Maybe he meant Rome. According to legend, the founders of the city, Romulus and Remus, were raised by a she-wolf. Hmm. No, that's too vague. Does Vatican City have an animal on its coat of arms? No. And the Pope? Every Pope has his own emblem, but the new one doesn't have an animal. You don't seem to like the new Pope. It's too early to say. But who's fit to hold a candle to John the 23rd? Il Papa Buono, as we used to call him. The good Pope. He just died recently. What was his heraldic animal? He was a lion, and so was his heraldic animal. For a Catholic, Buenarroti's Adam could be a mnemonic for the lion. Pope John XXIII was elected in the Sistine Chapel like every other pope. A work of art hints at a coat of arms with a lion on it. Hmm. Maybe. I'll make a note of lion. I'm gonna go have a look around. All right. The Baroness seems to have a reason to celebrate. She's downing one glass of champagne after another. The less I have to do with her, the better. Best if she doesn't even remember that I exist. Although, based on her alcohol consumption, I don't really think I have to worry about that. The doctor is upstairs. He probably locked the door. Yes. Hmm, maybe the art magazine will help me with the symbols. Indeed. An article about the different works of art and how they survived the Second World War. And there's also a picture of the bust of Nefertiti. The unique Egyptian work of art was... 1913. Hmm. Hmm. Permission to export to Germany. Second World War. Safe at the Reich Bank. Then a bunker. And then a salt mine. Prevented from shipping the bus to the United States. Back in Berlin since 1956. Very glad. Blah, blah, blah. Soon in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin and hopefully someday in a reunified Berlin on the Museum Island. Okay, so the bust of Nefertiti is located in Berlin. And which animal is on the city's coat of arms? The Berlin Bear. I just need one more animal. <laughs> 